make up your mind you're going to stay with the breath. And that means you're going to have to make a determination, because you'll have other desires as well. The desire to think about what you're going to eat, the desire to think about what you're going to do after the meal. All kinds of things you might want to think about. But for right now you say, no, we have a more important desire, which is to get the mind to settle down. As Ajahn Mahabhava points out, it's not the case that you practice without desire. It's just that you learn how to order your desires. He says the only th people who don't have any desires are dead people. As long as you're alive, you're going to have desires. It's a question of learning to select the ones that will be most helpful, most skillful, most conducive to true happiness. It's not the case that the Buddha said all desire is bad. After all, there is a desire that's part of right effort in the path. So we learn how to cultivate that and say no to everything else. Years back I was giving a Dharma talk to a group up in Orange County, and I happened to mention the word dignity. After the talk, a woman, an emigre from Russia, came up. She said she'd been to America for seven years. She had learned the word dignity when she learned English in Russia, but she'd never heard anybody use it here in America. And just recently I heard of another woman from Russia, been to the States, went back, and she said she saw no dignity in our country. It's because people can't say no to their desires. They don't know how to restrain themselves. Because with restraint comes dignity. You see that there are certain desires that are beneath you, certain desires that when you follow them will lead to harm, and so you don't do them. You learn how to question your desires. Even the ones you think are right, you have to question them. And when you do that, okay, then your value as a human being goes up. After all, this is the position that the Buddha has us take with the noble truths. Instead of following our cravings, we're supposed to abandon them. Instead of holding on to our clingings, we're supposed to comprehend them until we have no greed, aversion, or delusion around them, which means we let go. We're learning how not to be led around by the nose with our desires. This is an image that may not have the same force as it nowadays as it used to. If you want to lead a water buffalo around, you put a ring in its nose, and then you attach a rope to the ring, and then you pull it. And of course, it's going to hurt, and it has to go has to go wherever you pull the rope. And for most of us, we're being pulled around by our Greed, we're being pulled around by our lust, we're being pulled by our, around all kinds of desires. We have to learn how to cut the ring so the desires can't pull us around. Then we're in charge and we can follow the desires that we realize really are useful, really are helpful. That's what gives dignity and worth to our lives. That's when we're worthy of the noble truths. The Buddha wouldn't teach the noble truths to people unless they had learned how to see the drawbacks of sensuality and the virtues and the goodness that comes from generosity and virtue. In other words, the goodness that comes when you learn how to say no to your desires, question your desires, and act only on the ones that really are conducive to a happiness that is totally harmless, that's good all around. So here's practice. Stay with the breath. Anything else that comes up right now, you don't have to pay any attention to it. Just let it go, let it go, let it go. Hold on to this one desire, because it is part of the noble path.